Now, all the rage in homes, individuals, is this new trend to minimalism, where they have a home, and like this young lady, where she has two pieces of furniture in her entire house, or you go into their bathroom and they have a toothbrush, and that's it. Okay, that's fine. We're going to do that with Windows 11. We're going to use a PowerShell utility called Win11 Debloat. And it's going to allow us to rip out all that unwanted stuff out of Windows 11. And I just did Windows 11 24H2. And so I've got a lot of stuff to clean up. Let's get started. Here's a perfect example of Windows 11 24H2. And you can see it's just loaded with stuff that you and I, a lot of us, don't use especially in a virtual environment where you don't need a lot of this. You have specific applications you use, and most of this stuff is just taking up space in the registry and space on the hard drive. Although all of us know, in most cases, with a physical machine and a terabyte hard drive, it probably doesn't matter. But a lot of times, there are reasons to get rid of this bloatware because it causes conflict with corporate apps or critical business apps, and you just need to get it out. So notice all this stuff is going to be gone. You can see it's got Copilot everywhere, and all of this can be cleaned out, and you can get back to a basic operating system with the apps that you want. To get started, we're just going to go to a GitHub site, and you can see the URL down below. You can just type in Google and just win 11 debloat, and it'll take you to this GitHub site. And here's where you can get started with this utility. So exactly what is this tool going to do? It's going to run a PowerShell script that's going to allow us to remove a lot of various apps. The apps that we, some of us, most of us, don't even use telemetry tracking, suggested content. You can also delete Bing, Web Search, Copilot, and more. There's a few things that you can modify in File Explorer if you want, and they give you the option of making taskbar changes, and that's entirely up to you. Then context menus, if you want to modify those, those are available. And then Xbox-related material, you can rip that out. So that's what Win11 Debloat does. In order to run this PowerShell, you're probably going to need to change your execution policy on PowerShell. So if you're not familiar, you might want to go back and look at your PowerShell policy and modify it so you can run a PowerShell script on that PC. Well, how easy is this to run? Very easy. If you've got your execution policy set correctly, you can simply copy and paste this script right here. This is called the quick method, by the way, and pop it into an administrative terminal, PowerShell, and off it goes. It automatically downloads everything, and it will pop up another PowerShell window and give you the menu, and you can start debloating whatever Windows 11 you're on. This will also work to some degree for Windows 10. Here is the quick method for running WinBloat. You go to the GitHub site, scroll down, and there's the script. You just copy and paste it into an admin PowerShell console, and it just starts downloading and doing its thing. Now, you have to have the execution policy on PowerShell correct. So notice it just pops up another PowerShell window, and you've got the main menu, and you can go from there. Look at the get execution policy dash list. I think the one that you have to have is the process that has to be unrestricted. I did more than that, but I think you only need the process. You can also do it through traditional method where you go to the site. There's a download link. You can see it on the screen. You download a master.zip file. You extract it to wherever you want. Open up a PowerShell as an administrator and change your PowerShell prompt to the folder where you saved your Win11 debloat files. And then 
period backslash win11 dbloat.ps1 and you launch your menu and you're ready to go. Now there are lots of parameters with this PowerShell script. So there's a long column of parameters on the GitHub site and you can peruse through them and see which one works best for you if you want to do it with a parameter. So you can see down here an example of the PS1 and a, and a couple parameters are being put in there. So you can, you can see there's quite a list. You can choose what parameter you want and you can use these parameters to customize the script. So you're going to get a main menu that looks something like that. You have the default mode, which basically he's already set up some default apps to get rid of. And then everything else is up to you. Or you can do number two, which is custom mode, where you can choose just about anything. And then they had just an app removal without making any other changes. And then you got show more information. So you have options. So here's an example of default mode. And once you choose number one, you'll see you get all these. It's going to disable things like Windows Copilot. It's going to get rid of the default selection of apps. There's more, but it's going to get rid of the default. You can modify it if you go to the apps list.txt, just a text file, and you can go in there and modify what app is left and what app is removed. It's just that simple. We'll get into that in just a minute. It will disable telemetry, uh, remove Bing, uh, tips and tricks on the lock screen, and on and on. So take a look. You can pause the video, look at the thing, or download our video notes for more detailed information. Now let's take a look at the main menu and choose instead of the default mode, number one, let's, let's choose number two, which is the custom. Here's some of the options. Don't remove any apps, which is N. One, remove only the default selection of bloatware apps from the apps list.txt. Remove default selection of bloatware apps as well as calendar mail. You can look at the, the menu. And then number three, select which apps to remove and which to keep. So it kind of gives you an right in the screen option to make a choice at that point. Let's take a look at number three. When you choose number three, you're going to get this dialog box of all those apps and bloatware, and you can just check or uncheck and hit confirm and off she goes. Here's a little larger view of that same thing. Sometimes it's hard on a screen to see all the details. Well, let's go ahead and run when debloat the PowerShell script and it's going to pop up at the main menu. We're going to choose number two. We're going to do the custom mode. It'll allow us to modify the script however we want on screen. So it's going to give us a constant prompt on the screen. Here you can see it's already started. We're going to select number three, which allows us to remove whatever we want and keep whatever we want. So here's the first pop-up menu and we can see all the apps. And I'm actually cleaning a virtual machine in this demo. So you can see me going through and I'm just about ripping everything out one by one. So you can leave whatever you want, take out whatever you want. In my case, I'm actually cleaning a virtual machine and I'm not going to leave a whole lot in there. I am going to make a mistake and remove my Windows terminal, which I always want on every PC. But, oh well, I'll just have to reinstall it. We're going to, once we've checked all the boxes, I'm going to hit confirm and that's the apps that will get ripped out. And that's what I want. I want a clean virtual machine. Now it's going to continue to prompt us. What about Xbox game and screen recording? What about pinned apps? Do you want to remove all pinned apps from the start menu for this user only, Home Boss? Or do you want to remove all pinned apps for all existing and new users? So again, you just get prompted and you can choose disable telemetry diagnostic data yes or no and you can just walk through and customize what this powershell script is going to do we're disabling bing web search copilot yes no windows recall so when windows recall comes out you can rip it out old style windows 10 
which really doesn't have any bearing. It's a Windows 11 box. And then again, do you want changes to File Explorer? Yes or no. And once we get done, it starts the process of attempting to remove all these apps. It does not guarantee that every app will remove. Some apps have restrictions. So here again, Edge, it says, uh, can't remove it. And we, you get prompted, do you want to forcefully uninstall it? And I say no. So you can watch it uninstall all the items that you've asked it to do. And it's just ripping them out. This one is a virtual machine that I'm actually cleaning. So you're watching me tear it up. And we're just seeing all the various removal pieces. Now here was Windows Terminal. I checked the box. I shouldn't have checked the box. Now I got to reinstall it. We're done. Let's go take a look at the results of our brutal PowerShell script. And we can see it's really clean. There's not a whole lot in this Windows 11 box in terms of applications. Now I can put in what I want and I'm ready to go. Now the last option is number three. Well, it's actually not the last one. We've got one more and that's zero. Show more information. Let's choose number three and let's take a look. This one is very interesting. So you've got default mode and you can look, you've got sysprep options where it actually goes in the Windows default user profile and cleans that out. So every user that logs on from that point on is going to have the changes that you did on the default user profile. So that's interesting. And then it's got things that impact just Windows 11, some just Windows 10. Again, you can go through and see all the options here and customize as you please. Let's look at the apps list. This is the text document that's in the list of files and you can open it up with any text editor and modify it. If you notice here in the beginning, it simply says add the pound character in front of any app that you want to keep. So if you want clip champ, you simply put a pound symbol in front of the clip champ name and it won't remove that. So that's really simple to use. Let's take another look at part of the apps list. So further down in the apps list, it says this. Notice these applications have a pound symbol in front of them. They won't be removed. So if you want them removed, you need to remove that character. So go through here and delete all the pound symbols of every additional feature that you want it to automatically remove and it'll be gone when it runs the app. One more section, more items that will not be removed. They have the pound symbol in front of the application. So again, if you want them to be gone, just delete the pound symbol. Now make sure you save your changes. Mr. Vanderpool, why are you wanting people to become a member of your channel? Don't you realize they're going to have to pay $2.99 every month out of their income? Yep, I do. And actually, YouTube takes 30% of that. So we don't even get $2.99 when you uh, become a member of the Tech Savvy Production channel. I started teaching technology almost 32 years ago. And I taught primarily electronics at first, electronics technology. And then I switched to information technology about 25 years ago. I had a little gentleman from Bolivia. He was just incredibly energetic a student. And he was teaching me how to edit INI files in Windows 3.1. And I just was hooked on information technology. Never looked back. Started doing Cisco. Started doing all kinds of courses so that I could move my program that I was teaching at the time from electronics to information technology. And I'm still in contact with Javier from Bolivia. My first technical course in information technology was Windows for Work Group 3.11. Some of you are just drawing a blank. You should. It's a long time ago. Troubleshooting. And around January 3rd, 2010, I began to take lectures that I taught in class every day, and we would just put a camera and point and shoot, and it was raw. I mean, you, there was no editing. There was just a little bit of editing on the front end of the video. Uh, we edited a little bit on the back end, and we just stuck it up on YouTube. So after I retired, over the last three years, I went back to YouTube. Can I get an audience of serious technical learners who would generate enough ad revenue that could pay the basic costs that required to make those videos. If you're thinking, Mr. Vanderpool, you have a nice home. Can't you just afford to do this for free? Well, 
that's not actually my home. This is. So this is my real office and over there is my dachshund under the blanket and my chihuahua on the floor and my HP server behind me that's sitting up against the wall. I got a Linux box back here. I got a whole lot of technology in front of me. That's really my home. So we're not trying to generate a whole lot of revenue just to pay the cost of this kind of training. But here's the bottom line. The type of material that we're creating on this channel is for serious technical learners. We don't get a lot of views. In other words, if I did a cooking channel and I was teaching you how to cook barbecue, I could probably get 100,000 views and we wouldn't be having this conversation. But because I'm creating very, very technical content and I try to make it very accurate and engaging, the audience shrinks down. People that really like this kind of content, that want it engaging, want it accurate, and want to learn are the people who watch these videos and that's the group that pays for the cost so if you become a member that 299 subtract what YouTube takes is what allows us to move forward you don't have to become a member for six years just become a member for five months I would like to continue creating content that is technical engaging and is after that 10% out there in YouTube world who really want to learn so why do I need you a member I need you to partner with me to make this channel successful, help us cover our costs, that's all we're asking, and become a member. Mm -hmm.